let's now work through configuring AWS permissions and creating what's called an EC2 service role. So first we need the policy. What's the best way to know what needs to go in this policy? We want to do a Google search for AWS Splunk policy. And one of the first links that should come up here is this uh, documentation from Splunk, documentation, add-on, configure AWS permissions. You want to click on that. And within that link for the Splunk documentation, we want to find an all-in-one policy. So if we scroll down, there's configure one policy containing permissions for all inputs. Let's go ahead and copy that. Now, mind you, this is, these are permissions for the Splunk add-on to be able to access various features or capabilities uh, in the AWS API. You might still need other permissions for things like creating a Kinesis stream or mapping it from a VPC flow log, CloudWatch log group to uh, the, the Kinesis stream itself. Uh, but in this case, for the add-on, we want to copy all of these permissions. And then now we want to jump to our management console, EC2 management console or <laughs> AWS management console. And we're going to go under IAM. And we're ready to paste these permissions into a new policy. So we're going to go to policies. And we're going to create new policy. In this case here, I'm just going to do JSON. Uh, and this look and feel might change over time as I'm finding out with AWS. And we're just going to paste here the policy. And then review policy. Everything seems to check out. We'll give it a name. I like to put an A underscore at the beginning uh, just so that they float up to the top. And once I'm done, just create policy. And once that's done, you should then see it listed right here, this A Splunk access. Once the policy is created, we're ready to map it to a role. So we're going to come to roles, create role. And here's where we're going to do AWS service and then EC2. Once we're under EC2, we're going to select here the use case of EC2 and next permissions. And then we're going to map what we just created, this A Splunk access, uh, to that role. And give this role a name. And create role. And then once you do that, now we're ready to associate this role with the EC2 instance that you have Splunk AWS add-on running. So we go to services, we go to EC2, look at your, your instances. So here's my AWS app AMI. I'm going to select that one, go to actions, instance settings, and attach replace IAM role. And then once I'm in there, I'll select the one that I just created, the Splunk EC2 role. And that's it. With this, we're basically enabling the Splunk add-on that's running in your own AWS managed environment to discover this role and the permissions associated with this role. This circumvents you from having to put any secret keys or any other keys when doing the add-on configuration. This is also all described in our documentation under the setup add-on, discover an EC2 IAM role. Now I want to validate this auto discovery of the role that I just assigned to my AWS add-on EC2 instance. So let's jump into our AWS console, get the IP address of our instance. So in my case, AWS app AMI, get the IP address. Then I'm going to open a new tab, colon, whoops. Here it is, right? You need to put colon 8000 at the end. And then once you log on, in this case, I was already logged on, but once you log on, you'll want to go into the Splunk add-on for AWS. You can see that I have other apps here installed. Uh, I'm not going to worry about those. Splunk add-on is the one I care about. And then within here, we want to go to the configuration tab. It's going to start in inputs. You want to go to configuration. And what's under the accounts section now, and this is loading, this now, here we go, just uh, automatically appeared and saying yes to auto-discovered IAM role. So by doing this, by doing what we did in the previous step, all those permissions are now inherited uh, into, into here. After validating your account connection or the auto-discovery, this is also a good time to create the first input, and that is a description input. Think of that as an auto-discovery. And so you're going to need to do this for every account or every assume role that you have. Uh, but once you do this, notice that it's going to basically create an inventory of all of these different services in AWS, and by default, it's going to run every 3,600 seconds uh, and populate. You can change that at your own will, uh, but know that that should be another thing there that you should be ready to do. And here's what some of those events look like 
from AWS description once they come into Splunk. And again, this will basically act as a an inventory of what's out there. Also populate various dashboards as well as lookups on the Splunk side. Um, so here is some of the events. And if we go to statistics here with this table, uh, at least you can see some of the fields that are being populated, what source they're coming from, what region they're representing, and so on. Let's now cover assume role capabilities where you can have the Splunk add-on assume the role of different users in your organization. And this comes in handy because most organizations do have many accounts, many users, each doing their own thing, but you still need to capture data from those instances and be able to present it centrally, centrally manage it, correlate it, and so on. That's where assume role capabilities come in, where we'll basically have the account that Splunk is logging in as on the left-hand side here, assume different roles for account one, assume a role for account two, and so on, and then get insights into those environments. Here are the steps that we're going to go through to make this happen. Steps one and two are done on the AWS side. Step three is a short step done on the Splunk add-on side. To assume a role, we first need to get the AWS ID of our central or master account. So if I'm logged into my master account, which I am in this console, I basically find my username up here, my account, and then the ID number will be at the very top of that screen. Then I have to go into my end user account, uh, one of my end users account, or have them execute basically the next set of steps on that account. And here I launched into Safari, which is logged into a different uh, AWS account, and you can see I have no instances running in this one. Uh, but in here, I need to go back to services, and I go to IAM. And from here, this is where I now want to first create a policy, like we did before this access for Splunk. So if I go into here, this policy, that is what got copied from the Splunk documentation. And once I create that policy, I can now go to roles. I can create a role, and this time we're going to do another AWS account that is going to be able to assume that role. We're going to paste our ID in here and then go next to do permissions. And then once we have the permissions uh, defined or the map to that policy, we should then basically be able to see our role here created. So here's this assume role example that I created with that source account. And then once that role is created with the policy assigned to it, we now need to take this URL and this is what we're going to be passing into the Splunk add-on. So we are still at this point within the source account, not the central account. We are within the source account where we're capturing this uh, particular URL. So now that I've copied it, and let's just do it this way too, copy link, and go back into our Splunk instance. So we're going to go to configuration. We're going to now click on IAM role. And in there, we can go add. We're going to give this a name, my other account, and paste that whole ARN in there. Okay, And once that's done, uh, we are now ready to add inputs and map them to this particular uh, account. And you can see I've already added this in here from before, but that's the, the, the process. And similar to before, since we just added an assume role, this is also a good time to add a description input for that assume role. Uh, I already have that here for my peer account, and so it's just pointing to that one assume role and have it also uh, discover the respective regions. And then validating the data is actually coming in, uh, or data does come in, you can go to your Splunk search, put in uh, that account, and you might need to wait a little while for this, uh, give it a few minutes, maybe even up to an hour uh, for it to catch up, uh, but then you can validate all of the different configurations or a lot of the configurations that are coming in. Assume role is great. However, what do you do when you have tens or even hundreds of accounts? Is assume role really the best way? That's where you want to reconsider and maybe have a centralization strategy. Depending on what the AWS input is, whether it's CloudWatch logs in this case, or config or CloudTrail, the strategy will vary, but they all have a, a common theme, and that is centra centralization. In the case of the CloudWatch logs that we have here, you're going to have all of the different accounts basically subscribe to a central Kinesis Firehose or Kinesis Stream that then Splunk can capture data from or have data sent to. What's the benefits of this? It's not just on the Splunk side where you have less administration, significantly less administration, but it's also your use of the AWS API. You'll have reduced charges from using less of the AWS API and uh, just a, 
a more manageable environment.